And I'm sure that our tenants will be very interested to know uh, why they are wrong and why some of the Labour councillors are right on this issue when our tenants are calling for far tougher conditions and Labour councillors, many of whom represent them, are calling for the complete opposite. Also on the question of locality, as members will be aware, the government are also proposing that the term locality should in future refer to the whole of the United Kingdom. Coincidentally, two weeks ago, there was a meeting of the Borough Residents Forum, which is the representative body of all our tenants' associations. This was discussed at that meeting, and unanimously they voted to support that proposal. The majority of our tenants are decent, law-abiding people. They have no time at all for the very small minority who cause havoc on their estates and in the local areas. They want them out. As Councillor Belton has correctly said, this is a matter for the court. Um, if uh, people are uh, convicted, then uh, we will certainly be seeking uh, to evict them, um, but it is entirely a matter for the court uh, to decide whether or not that happens. So I think this motion really is complete nonsense because for a start it would mean breaking the law and secondly it would mean actually voting against something that councillors on this side have supported for very many years and I'm sure in subsequent speeches they will be explaining to us why they've held these beliefs for so long and now they no longer do. Thank you Madam Mayor. Thank you Councillor Ellis. Councillor Daly. Uh, thank you Madam Mayor. Um, Madam Mayor, my, my colleague Councillor Belton has outlined the many reasons why the eviction of council tenants who have had scrapes with the law uh, is entirely ill-advised in our view. Uh, but for my part, I'd like to focus on the specific case of Daniel sartain Clark, and in particular, the leader of the council's astonishing error of judgment in deciding to issue an eviction order as punishment for an event to which Mr sartain Clark had not even stood trial. Indeed, some seven weeks on from the riots, Mr. Sartain Clark's case has still not been heard, yet the council continues to stand by its eviction notice rather than wait to hear the outcome of the trial. While Councillor Ellis has made it clear that there is a difference of opinion across the chamber about the rights and wrongs of using evictions as a supplement to the criminal justice system, I cannot believe that the vast majority of councillors would not support the view that punishment should not be meted out until guilt has been proven. While on this side of the chamber, we would question the need for the council to ever supplement or attempt to take the place of the criminal justice system, there can be no doubt that such, a, such action is entirely inappropriate before a trial has even taken place. Indeed, such a course of action potentially places this council in contempt of court. In Britain, we have a criminal justice system to be proud of, one that doesn't shy away from taking appropriate action against those that are proven to have broken the law. But it is also a system that protects the right of an individual to be presumed innocent until found guilty, a right that this institution should be proud to endorse and protect. The decision to serve an eviction notice on Mr. Sartain Clark and his family, Madam Mayor, on the strength of a police charge, not conviction, and without even taking the trouble to seek out the other side of the story, was not only unjust, but raises serious questions about the integrity and judgment of the leadership of this council. In the wake of the August riots, the residents of Wandsworth were understandably both shaken and angry about how events had unfolded. Many were left wondering how the council, as the body that has responsibility for coordinating local services in the event of a major incident, had been so thoroughly unprepared for the events of the evening of the 8th of August. Having left the borough entirely exposed and unprepared for disorder on this scale, it's perhaps no wonder that Councillor Govindia and his team were were desperate to demonstrate that they were in control of the situation after the event. But the eviction of Mr. or the threatened eviction of Mr. Sartain Clark smacked of panic and undue haste. This was a knee-jerk reaction designed to send the message to residents um, that the council would take the strongest that. possible line with anyone found to have been involved in the riots. Uh, Yet in his desperation, the, the leader took a course of, of action which that. was entirely point judged. Who is what? Point of order from whom? From New Councillor... New Councillor McCaws then. Councillor McCausland, what's your point of order? My point of order is that um, A, um, Councillor Daly uh, is inaccurate. Um, there's no, no eviction notice has been served. It could be a notice of possession. Uh, but could you please specify which breach of standing orders you're referring to? 
Point of order is actually to well, standing orders. Okay, well, um, earlier on you said that we weren't going to speak about any... Um, we weren't speaking about... We weren't going to speak actually about what happened, what's happening in court, about the actual offences. He has gone very clear, he's got very near, but the Chief Exec and I are listening to him very carefully. Councillor McCausland, thank you. Councillor Daly, please continue. So as I was saying, this was a knee-jerk reaction designed to show that the council would take the strongest possible line with anyone involved in the riots. Yet that this was an ill-judged uh, form of action, bypassing the criminal justice system uh, and appointing the council judge and jury over the case in one of the alleged participants in the riots. The decision to issue details of the eviction to the press before even notifying the family illustrates the particularly callous and hasty nature of the council's move. In a time of crisis, the residents of Wandsworth expect a steady hand, not blind panic, followed by on-the-hoof hasty decision-making. The knee-jerk reaction to the riots not only brings into question this council's ability to run the council, but also leaves us to wonder how many other instances there have been where this council has decided to take the law into its own hands rather than follow due process. Although it is too late to undo the trauma that has been inflicted on the family of Mr Sartain Clark, and too late to undo the damage that has been done to the council's credibility by serving this notice before it was in possession of the whole story, it is not too late for the council to withdraw its threat to the family. As Councillor Belton points out, it's not just the family who is being, it's not just Mr Clark who is being threatened with eviction, it's his mother and the child for his, Mr Sightling Clark's alleged behaviour. As for, the, as for Mr. Clark himself, should he be found guilty, the courts will no doubt punish him. But today, just as was the case seven weeks ago, there has still not been a conviction. Councillor Daly, could you wind up, please? Yeah. Thank by you. withdrawing the notice now, the council will not only show that it has respect for the criminal justice system, but will take an important first step towards winning back the trust and respect of its social tenants, which has been so badly damaged by this error of judgment. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Tom. Um, I'd like, if I may, Madam Mayor, to support our policy on evictions. I do so because I think, as the Cabinet member has made clear, it is very important that we try and maintain our policy. I mean, the Housing Act came in in 1985, which offered the security of tenure. The Housing Act of 1996 allowed for antisocial behaviour being a factor that could be considered a breach of tenancy. And subsequently, over the years, we've had a policy of dealing with residents that have caused such antisocial uh, anti behaviour, such as if you cause a nuisance in Wandsworth, and I'm including not just the tenant himself, but anybody within the dwelling house, or indeed damage to property within Wandsworth Borough, then that is a breach of tenancy. So therefore, somebody taking part in riots in Clapham Junction would, I thought, be prima facie such a case. And it is strange, as the Cabinet Minister observed, that the Labour Party has now suddenly decided to pick up on this because they've had a lot of many, many years in which to alter it. And I wondered if Martin Linton ever raised it while he was MP in the House. I think we should be told. But the key thing is, I think, not so much the issue of in, uh, evictions. I think a lot of it is to do with publicity. Some of you may have seen that the uh, new BBC News Flash a few weeks ago when there was an interesting figure sloping down from a tower block in the Doddington Estate. And who was it? Of course, our good friend, Councillor Belton. But he did not modestly do the interview. He was, in fact, the interview was carried out by the tenant. And the tenant, uh, despite every effort we in Wandsworth and the housing department had made to keep her name secret and not disclosed, it promptly was flashed up on the TV screen. And the tenant's view was that Wandsworth Council was fascist. Can I just say fascist? Incredible. Because perhaps when Councillor Belton next appears on one of his uh, television programs, which he's been describing this issue about, Russia and Iran, France, perhaps Russia would be a good one, because the Russians, as you know, had a very torrid war against fascism. But there was also a letter to the Times, as you know, Madam Mayor, when there's a problem in Putney, uh, they don't write. They write to the Times. <laughs> and this letter uh, went on to say 
that the Wandsworth Council was gu guilty of Sippenhaft. Sippenhaft, I should say, is what the Naz Nazi and Soviet Union practice was when somebody spoke out or committed an act against the regime, they were promptly put as a whole family sent to a concentration camp or to the gulag. Can I say, can we try and put this in perspective? Because this tenant signed an agreement willingly which picked up the obligations of that agreement. And I think one of the problems has been too long the use of ASBOs has just been seen as a ticking off, no longer seriously as a penalty. And so I think it's too often we're seeing uh, human rights, legal rights, tenants' rights, everybody rights, but no sense of responsibility. And it is a responsibility to have a lifelong tenure in a council house. So tenants were consulted on this, on a wide range. And so I think it's very important to note, too, that the accepted definition of locality, and indeed the court, as has been said, will have the final say. So may I suggest to Councillor Belton, when he next goes on some author authoritarian TV, that it is the democratically elected Wandsworth Council who overwhelmingly rejected his motion as both ill-conceived and ill-advised when set against the clear tenancy conditions that punish wrongdoers, certainly, but primarily protect the community and maintain the law-abiding environment that the vast majority of our tenants want and deserve. Thank you, Councillor Tom. Councillor Speck. Right, thank you. Um, looking at the motion before us, I would like to concentrate on the select sections concerning the relevant use of evictions by the Council, the treating of all residents in the borough equally and fairly, and again, the adverse effects on women and children by the political use of evictions. I want to start by saying I'm not against evictions per se, but they should be kept for housing management policy only, they're not as an extra punishment uh, for other issues, and that's what they're there for. I've certainly seen many times when it's an appropriate tool to use on our local council estates, where there is antisocial behaviour and cr criminal behaviour, uh, we've all had, I'm sure, case, case work and things when we're trying to do something about that. I mean, I actually live on a council estate, which in general is a good place to live. I like it. I've got nice neighbours. Neighbours talk to each other and so on. Yet when there's a problem and we try to do something about it and get some action on undesirable behaviour, it generally takes a very long time, not this sort of knee-jerk the day after somebody's out sort of thing, and we've been going on about it for ages. So, for example, on my estate, where there's a group of young men congregating in a particular block, intimidating residents, causing damage, and drug dealing, apparently it's quite cheap in that block, um, as far as I can see, some actions have been taken. Officers have been actually good about taking some action. And we've got ASBOs, and we've got this served, and we've got that served. And hopefully it will be done something, or something will be redone very shortly. But it's actually only really hotted up in the last month or so that we're getting something done, presumably because people have woken up that we do very few of them. That's fair enough. And when you talk to the residents on, on the estate, as I say, I live there, um, that's what they see as being evictions and antisocial behaviour. It's not if somebody's done something somewhere else and, and uh, they'll be treated then like second-class citizens. So where eviction, the use of eviction where actions have failed that's appropriate, but it's not appropriate as an extra penalty not related to where they live, and it's treating council tenants as second-class citizens. I, think we, you know, I believe in fairness and equality for all our residents and that we should treat all our residents accordingly. We shouldn't be treating one section of our community as second-class citizens, which is, this what, is what we're doing. If we use evictions as extra punishments for any p offences committed, not directly to where we, uh, they live. We are putting ourselves above the law. A, ten, a council tenant can be tried and sentenced if guilty and under the uh, council, what it's saying now, lose their homes as well. Now, private tenants and householders and leaseholders, I don't know whether I can be evicted because I'm a leaseholder or not, if I do the same, um, they have a lesser punishment for the same offence. 
And I think that, you know, it, that's what it's about. It's about the fairness of it. It cannot be right that those who own their own homes cannot be evicted, while those in social houses can be discriminated against. I know that there are many instances where crimes are committed by people from the better off areas of the borough, but they don't have the possible threat that they'll have, they and their families will be evicted from the homes because of it. And, and I understand that private landlords are also very worried that if we kick everybody else out, they end up with them and what they're going to do. Turning to the effects on families and children, a particular case has been mentioned a few times now, that the person involved is an 18-year-old, never been involved with the police before, not been proved guilty of anything. Um, and I do believe innocent to prove guilty. Um, I suspect you're getting near the mark, please, about talking okay. about, thank you. I'm not saying that, I mean, I think we're just ju jumping the gun, that's all I was saying. I do think it's a knee-jerk reaction, thinking things through. If this is followed through, anybody who's got a family of, uh, who's committed a crime somewhere can be kicked out. Um, it does affect women and children, innocent women and children, who've not done anything and they can be made homeless. Um, we could even see residents of long standing of gr with grown up children living with them, and we see a lot of that in our overcrowded flats, um, still in the accommodation. They might have to be evicted too. So I think that we've really got to look at it. Women and children badly affected. We've seen most of, from the statistics, most are male. Um, what are we going to do with them? Do we move them to a different place? The children stop their education and so on. It's not fair, it's not right, and it's not equal. It leads to more deprivation and more criminals and criminal activity, not less. And we need to rethink. It's very random, as other people have said, and I'm, I'm running out of time, so I will cut it quickly. But at the public meetings, certainly the ones I've been with, they review, which I think is going well. Um, many people, after the initial knee-jerk reaction, are now thinking about long-term solutions, sending lots of people to jail. What's coming out is doesn't cure them. We need to look at the long-term solutions and what we're going to do about improving the situation. And this eviction does not. I think we need to look at it again. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor.